Hello and welcome. My name is Delmico L. Cunningham. I will be your instructor for this tutorial lesson and today we're going to look at building layered shaders right inside of Maya. So, what is a layered shader? A layered shader is basically if you think about working inside of Photoshop you have multiple layers and each layer can contribute something to the overall composite that you have inside of Photoshop. Now inside of Maya this is much the same thing. So think of maybe building a car and having car paint and on top of the car paint you have you know some other graphics on top of the car. This is basically the same process. So what we want to do is I'm going to show you two ways to build a layered shader right inside of Maya. So the first way we're going to build a standard Maya shader. Um, Maya layer, layered shader rather. So <clears throat> Here inside of my Hypershade, I can look and see I'm underneath the Maya section. And inside my Maya shader nodes, I have this layered shader. So I'm going to click on this layered shader right here. And I'm actually going to just maximize my Hypershade because we only need to see it right now. So here inside of, this, inside of my layered shader, I can see looking at the attributes for this over here, so if the attribute panel is not up, you can always hit control A and bring up your attribute panel so you can see the attributes of your currently selected object inside of Maya. First thing I want to do is I'm going to change the name of this and I'm going to call this uh, just ball paint. Now we can see already here inside of Maya that this layer shader by default when it's made, it actually just puts in a green swatch of color. Now this color swatch can be deleted later on and this section right here where we're looking at this is basically where all of our shaders are dropped into the layered shader. So I'm going to make two blends so over here back inside of Maya and here's my blend so blend one and blend two. So what I'm going to do with blend one and blend two I'm going to change the color of these guys so that we can tell them apart. So on blend two I'm going to change that and make it a red and I'm just going to call this, name this shader red and I'm going to go back to this guy right here and I'm going to make this one blue and change the color of it to blue. So I've got these two shaders and I've got my layered shader right here inside of Hypershade so what I want to do, I want a middle mouse drag so click on one of my shaders and then once it's selected, middle mouse drag it to my layered shader. And I can just say default. And I'll do the same thing for this guy. Select the red shader, middle mouse click and drag, and drop it on my layered shader. And I'm just going to say default. So right now you can see, and I can always come here, I'm going to right click on my um, ball paint shader, and I'm going to say graph network, just so it'll regraph it so you can see what these guys are doing. So you can see now, if I click on my layered shader, there's one, two, three swatches in my layered shader. Now remember, the green one is just made so that we have something inside of our layered shader so we can find it. So this one was not needed. So I'm going to hit the little X at the bottom of it. So there you go, there's the X. And I can now see that I've got my layered shader set up. And I'm going to go back in and make a piece of geometry in my scene. So let's go in here and just make a simple, uh, we'll just make a simple sphere. So there's my sphere, I'm just going to drag out a sphere on the, on the grid. And I'm going to click on this paint, this uh, ball underscore paint layered shader and drag it onto my ball. Now if I come in here and I click render, what you'll notice is that my ball is completely blue. There's no red showing up. Well, if we look inside of my layer shader panel in here, I can see there's my blue ball and then there's my red ball. Whichever one comes first is basically the one that's the top layer. So what I want to do is I need to have a way to be able to show through or cut holes in this top layer so that I can see the layer below it. Well, it's very easy. Here inside of my layered shader, you'll see there's a, there's a uh, node for color and one for transparency. And if you'll notice, both of those have input nodes right now. So, to be able to show 
my blue on some places and then show my red on other places, what I need to do is I need to actually make an alpha map for my transparency slot. But I've got a I've got an easier way to do that. Now you can make this alpha map yourself inside of Photoshop, but I've got an easier way to do it. And it's quick and simple. So what I'm going to do here inside of Maya, I'm going to click on transparency, I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to say break connection. Now you'll notice I have my blue, I have the very first shader selected when I did that. And then you'll see that it opens up my node over here. So transparency, and then here's my node. I'm going to click on this node, and I'm just going to use this black and white checker that's already inside of Maya. So if you see right now, what's really cool is that if I look at this and I come in here and render it, you can see where the black is at, it's showing my, well where the white is at, basically it's showing my blue and where the black is at it's showing this purple color because the blue and the red are mixing so if I needed this to actually show both colors and and not pick up anything like that one thing that I can do it's actually very simple I'm just gonna grab this guy and you see there's my transparency coming in right here I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take both of these and I'm going to duplicate them off so now that I have this duplication it's going to put it to default and for this noise for this checker right here what I'm going to do is I need a way to actually invert it so I'm going to invert its color and then go back to my layered shader and then click down to my red right click on it break connection and then I'm gonna take this checker 2 and drop it right here on my transparency so you can see you get some pretty wild effects so I've got transparency hooked up to both of these All right. um, the really nice thing about this is is that now I have a way to be able to make a layered shader right here inside of Maya. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to select all of this and delete it all. And I've still got my layered shader. What I want to do at this point is I want to use a mental ray MIA material. So I'm going to use this MIA underscore material underscore X passes. So I've got one and two. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make one of these a different color than the other. So I'm just going to make this one purple by default. And I'm going to leave this one gray. So one thing you'll notice is when I go to try to when I go to try to actually add, if I come in here and middle mouse click and drag this onto my layered shader, it asks me to drop it on the default spot. When I go to default, what you'll notice is that it actually doesn't link up anything. And the reason why is that this this uh, MIA material, the, the Maya materials, do not read the same way as the mental ray materials. Now I still can use the mental ray materials and make a layered shader. The way around this, and so it's just a little fix to get around um, this inconsistency. What I want to do is I'm going to go back to Maya, and I'm going to look for my surface shader. So I'm going to make one surface shader and there's two surface shaders so what I want to do is I want to click on my MIA material middle mouse click and drag and drop it onto the surface shader it's going to ask me where I want to put it I'm going to say default when I choose default it brings up, it brings up my connection editor inside of my connection editor this is what I want to connect I want to look on the left hand side which is the output so this is my MIA material so I'm looking for the output of result. So here's the result, and I'm going to plug the result into the out color of the surface shader, and then close. And I'll go ahead and just change the name of this surface shader to be purple shader. All right, and I'm going to change the name of this guy right here. Go ahead and just get into the habit of it. This is going to be gray. 
shader. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. Middle mouse click, drag, drop, go to default. Let's look down in here. And once again, I want to look for the results. So the results of this shader should go to the out color of the surface shader. And then once that's set up, just close. Now what you'll notice is if I come in here and I grab this surface shader and middle mouse click and drag and drop it into my um, layered shader and say default, you'll see it does make a connection. I can do the same thing for this guy over here and just say default. And they both make connections. And once again, I will get rid of the, uh, the green that it makes by default when there's no shaders in it. So you'll see I have my gray shader and I have my purple shader. If I render this right now, what you will see is that my gray shader is showing on top. Now in viewport, it won't show you the shader, but when you render it will. So I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. So I'm going to click on the gray shader right here for transparency. I'm going to right click on this and say break connection. I'm going to go back to the node, click on the node button. I'll just put checker in here and then I'll render this again and what you can now see is that I have both shaders on one object so I have the gray showing through on top and then where the black areas are at that makes the purple underneath show through so hopefully this has been a very helpful process as you can tell with mental ray there's always realistically some type of workaround with a lot of the mental ray shaders but the mental ray shaders can do the same things that the original Maya shaders were intended to do just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of work around well I hope this lesson has been valuable and please check out the channel on Phoenix Incep at YouTube if you have any other additional questions or concerns make sure you drop me a line see you soon